McGuire's welcomes you to the car craziest half hour on television. Join us now as we mix it up with serious car enthusiasts from all walks of life, across America and around the world, and discover why so many of us have become car crazy. It's about the hood. However you describe your passion for cars, it transcends all geographic, economic, ethnic, age, and gender barriers. Car Crazy is your emotional connection with car lovers all over the world, who you have nothing in common with except for this unexplainable passion for cars that every car enthusiast understands and feels to their very core. It's been called a contagious disease, and we want you to catch the bug, <laughs> if you haven't already. And I'll have dinner, and I'll come back out and look at the car, and then and then my wife will go to bed, and I'll come back. Oh, 65. Oh, 65. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got so many, I can't remember. Come on, Dad. You know? That's how car crazy I am. <laughs> and now your host, crazy. Mr. Barry McGuire. He was born in England and raised in Canada, but he's experienced the big American dream which is the acronym for his business, Bad Company, which produces so many of the great television commercials for the car makers. Every day, he mixes his passion into his profession, restoring his favorite cars, while at the same time, shooting the sumptuous interiors and changing the exterior color of a car as easy as you change your clothes. This is the world of Bada Mataya. We could have spent our entire time with Bada in this shop, and you would have loved it but we want to focus on the personal side of his life because he's a car crazy. Bono Mataya, great to have you with Thank us you today. Much, and it's been wonderful walking through your shop, but we want to talk about, you know, the heart and the mind and what's behind all this passion that you have. Just a, a real love of automobiles and anything that's automotive. Um, something I stumbled into as a child and it's just kind of stayed with me. And it, I think it keeps me young. Walking through your house and Knowing you as I do, it's, it's it, this is a real passion. This is not a casual part of your life. You you're you're certifiably car crazy. <laughs> uh, certifiably, probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My wife would agree with that. Yeah, I think so. Uh, this house, it is the most amazing car guy house I've well, ever seen. Thank I you. have to tell you, I've seen a lot of a lot of great houses, but uh, this one, this one takes the cake. It was an idea that I'd had a long, long time ago when I was a kid. I wanted to build a house. It wasn't a car house, it was a house. And then as I had cars over the years, I always had to leave the house to go to the garage to see my cars. I said, there's something really wrong with that. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I never had to go out in the elements? I could, I could see the elements, I could hear them, but I never had to feel them. And so uh, we decided to, to incorporate the gallery in the house. And we still have a functioning garage where we store cars, but, uh, um, but we can rotate. Rose still hasn't allowed me to take anything into the bedroom. <laughs> we'll be right back after this break, and later we'll go car hopping across America and around the world, and we'll visit with the next generation of car guys. So stay tuned, right here on McGuire's Car Crazy. Car Crazy, Car Crazy. These are machines, okay? They're mechanical objects. And yet we have such love affairs with them. That we have this emotional connection. It's just, I, can you put that into words? Help, help us understand why that happens. How does it happen for you? Well, why does it happen? The best way to describe it is, uh, for me, is the experience that I get from it. Uh, I use all my senses. I can touch it. I can see it. When I start it up, I can hear it. I can hear the I can hear the engine. I can hear if valves are you know making a little noise, ticking. I can hear the muffler when I rev it. I can smell it. I can smell the gasoline. I can smell the exhaust. I can smell the oil. And uh, I can't taste it. But then you do get some. You know, sometimes you'll get some stuff in your face, and you might get a little taste that way. But the, you know, when you're sitting inside the car and and you're you're touching the upholstery, whether it's pure Corinthian vinyl or whatever, um, th that's what's nice about old cars. New cars have that new car smell and that feeling, and they're, so, they're phenomenal cars. But I'm a simple person, and they're technically just too advanced for me. What I like is the old car, and what's really cool about it is, is even though you restore it, and you brand new paint, new chrome, new upholstery, new carpet, and it has that new car smell, the first time you start it and you drive it, the old car comes back. So 
it brings you back again. And that whole experience, going from car to car to car. And each one has its own personality. Yeah. Say, why do I love this thing so much? What is so neat about it? When you're at the racetrack and everybody's gone and the car's just sitting there and you're watching the light and you get up in the morning and you see the wetness of the cars and all that. It's, it, 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 I keep coming back to that one word, experience. You know, the, the, and, and the desires that it brings up in me to, to just get my hands on it. Uh, when I, whenever I get another car, it's almost like I go back to my first automobile. I'll come home, I'll park the car in the garage, and I'll have dinner, and I'll come back out and look at the car, and then, and then my wife will go to bed, and I'll come back out and look at the car, and then I'll go to bed, and then I'm, I'm really tired. I'm really tired because I've gone through all of getting the car and getting it home, and, all, and then I can't wait to get back up in the morning, and I run right back out, I'm looking at the car, and, 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 and firing up to, to drive it. I mean... Uh, I still do that. I still do it. I still, uh, when I'm uh, in, at the point of getting a new acquisition, I still get really excited. The guys who have these cars that are three-wheelers or these uh, Model Ts, real, real old cars, even older than what I have, uh, they're absolutely, you know, yeah, and, and you know what you have to do. You have to kind of massage it. You have to breathe on it. You have to caress it. You have to do these little things. You know, to, you know oh, I, know, I didn't prime it right. I have to do this and do that. And the personality, you know exactly what it is. You know how to shift it. You shift too fast, you don't shift fast enough. You know, the, the, the revs, you just know everything about it. How to double clutch, make that yeah. car work to get from yeah. point A to point B. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to think of driving as a ballet. And it's, it's myself and the road. I like to feel the road through the seat of my pants. I can feel the road coming up in the car. And I can feel myself drifting and shifting. And all of a sudden, I get into this flow. And one of the games I like to play for myself is to see if I can get from my house to the, to the main highway without using my brakes. Oh. I just like to use the transmission. And, it's, and I can do it. it right. I can do it. It's just a really nice really, flow. And, a and, and, and then I can just kind of play it back and forth. And it's just really nice because you just have to have the experience to understand where you're shifting and how you're going. And then the car is making its noises. And then you're saying, oh, I think I'm over revving a little bit. And you shift real quick. And then you're, you're kind of like just cruising it down. It works. We'll visit some more with Batamataya, so don't go away. We'll be right back, right here on Car Crazy. My ride is so sweet. Hop on over and talk to me. The people you are about to meet represent the heart and soul of the car hobby. In the truest sense, this is reality TV for car guys. Now did you ever find a car so fine as mine? Hi, what's your name? Hi, Roberto Fata. Roberto, where are you from? Angwood, New Jersey. So uh, I take it you're a car guy? Oh, yes. Are you a certifiable car crazy or Absolutely. What? How car crazy are you? I have a son named Enzo. I'm you you crazy. named your son Enzo? Yes, that's how car crazy I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that qualifies you. It really does. And uh, you look like I might get on the track once in a while. Yes, I do. Uh, do I race a 360 challenge. Because I watch a show all the time, um, I redid my garage. I put the checkerboards on the floor, black and white checkerboard, the list of cabinets down the side, and uh, all the Ferrari memorabilia. Really? All the really? Because you saw some of the other collections around the yeah. country, so they inspired you, huh? Very big. Isn't that great? Yes. What's the best thing about the car hobby? Um, that I can share it with my kids. I really enjoy that. So it brings your, your kids close to you so you have a, yeah. you know, something you can enjoy together. They're only one in three, but they love it. Yeah. I was an antique car dealer for 21 years in Rockford, Illinois, and I probably have had, uh, oh, four to 5,000 collector cars over the years, and I buy and sell how, still. How many cars? Four to 5,000. Really? Collectible cars. Okay, well, you're Antiques into it a little bit. Antiques and plastics <laughs> and uh, high performance and convertibles. Corvettes, you name it. I think you're qualified. As I'm a qualified. Certified. <laughs> I think you're a certified car. Crazy. I think I can be one. Safe to say. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Jason Jack. It's my dad, Gary Jack. <laughs> How you doing, Smart? I'm very good. Okay. Hey, this is quite a ride you have behind you, Justin. Hey, you. Uh, what 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 are we what are we talking about here? I mean, I've never seen anything like this before. Well, it's a 1963 Willys Jeep. It was worked for the post office in San Bernardino from the years 1963 to 71. So it really was. Yeah, it was a postal vehicle. It really was. Oh yeah. And the thing is, the uh, only thing we did other than the motor, obviously, was we chopped the top. It's running about 400 horsepower. It gets down the road in a heartbeat. He did all the grinding and all the hard work. Uh, he did the grunt work. Really? He worked real good really? at that. He loves it. You enjoy working on these cars? Yes. He has a Corey, a 1953 Corey. Really? Oh, 65. Oh, 65. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got so many, I can't Come on, Dad. Keep it straight here. <laughs> 
Uh, talk about just a minute what it means to be able to work on a project like this with, with your boy Justin. Oh, with Justin? Oh, well, just having him is a reward enough. Yeah. I mean, we have such a tight bond, and the car is just the product of that. You know, the love and affection that we share is unbelievable. It's the, the car is the, the outgrowth of it. Yeah. We did this together. Now did you ever find a car so fine as mine? And now let's see how car crazy you are. Which car maker was associated with the advertising declaration? You'll step into a new automotive age when you drive your Cadillac, Rolls-Royce, Tucker, or Studebaker. The answer later in the show. When we come back, we'll visit some more with Batamataya and find out just how car crazy he really is. So stay tuned right here on McGuire's. Folks, if you just joined us, we're talking with Bada Mattia, who is the owner of the Big American Dream, bad company who makes all the great commercials for the car makers. And so talk about this fascination with Porsches. Okay, but I gotta explain to you, I'm going through a change of life. I know that. So so it's kind of <laughs> hard. Yeah, but, but go back to the, the Porsche Porsches, okay. portion of your Porsche <laughs> portion of your life. Um, I got my first Porsche, um, my wife and I. Um, I sold her car to buy my first Porsche. And I said, no, sweetie, don't worry about it. I said, well, what do you want? I'll buy it for you. And she says, well, I want a BMW 2002. Well, I had just this desire, and I sold her Toyota. I bought my first Porsche, and then I bought her a BMW. And the story behind the first Porsche was interesting because we were living in a little house in Pasadena, and my mother-in-law and my wife were sitting on the back porch watching this idiot just fondling and fooling with this car and vacuuming and washing and waxing and I'm just just oh I'm excited it's a blue metallic and it had it had a strange upholstery it wasn't quite right it was white but I lifted up the floor mats and it wasn't that wasn't correct somebody had gotten a little creative and and I was vacuuming with it and all of a sudden the whole head of the vacuum cleaner goes right through the floor and I went and um, my, I don't know if you've ever had uh, a, a, an anxiety attack or anything, but my stomach got into a knot, came up into my throat, and I was just, and I didn't know what to do, and I was almost in tears, and my wife says, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I didn't want to tell her I had made a bad purchase because I had sold her car to get it. I drove back to the guy who sold me the car, and I said, you know, you told me this car uh, didn't have any rust in it. He says, well, uh, I'll give you your money back. I said, okay, but I want to think about it too, so let me think, let me sleep on it. So. He uh, uh, took the car back, he gave me my money, I went home, and, and instead of going out and finding another car, I said, I have to have this car. <laughs> so the next day I go back, and he thought I was pulling a scam, so he had the car outside of his apartment. He had it chained around the axle to a telephone <laughs> pole because he thought that I was scamming and I was going to come back and steal his car at night. And as it turned out, he gave me 500 bucks off the car. I bought my first Porsche for $4,000. I took it home, and then I proceeded to go right to the nearest body shop, chopped out the floor, and welded in a piece of steel. I didn't realize no. that they had correct floor pans at the time. <laughs> That's, that was the first That's really involvement in Porsches. Uh, you're involved in so many parts of the hobby. You love to race. You've been racing Porsches for like 10, 12 years now? Well, yeah, I got talked into going vintage racing. And I started out with a 56 Euro European coupe that belonged to uh, Max Stanley, the, the test pilot for the Flying Wings. And I remember going around turn eight and guys were going by me and I'm sitting there and the car's going like this, shaking, because they're just rocking me as they go by. So I went back to my mechanic and I said, Dick, I want to go fast and I want to do this. And so he made the car really nice and, and I spun five times the next time I went on the track. <laughs> Every corner, I then they nicknamed me Spin Bata, and that's when I started with Porsches. Then in 1998, when Porsche was at the, uh, the Historics for their 50th anniversary, um, I was sitting up at the, the, the festival at the top, you know, the little gathering and, and award ceremony, if you want to call it, and, and, and I was wearing my Hawaiian shirt and my tam shanter and then all of a sudden I hear the Monterey Cup this year is going to go to Bata Mataya, and I didn't hear it. And my friend Bob Kahn is just <laughs> elbowing me and says, Bata, Bata, what, 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 what are you talking about? He says, you just won the Monterey Cup. I said, what's the Monterey Cup? Oh my goodness. I had no idea. I've since found out that it's a pretty nice pretty thing nice to have. Yeah, and, and so uh, uh, the car was named after Rose, Testy Rosa, because Rose would get testy. Yeah, and, and also the likeness of Rose. Yeah, the picture on, of her on the, on the car. On the, on the car. And, and so now people look at the car and they don't refer to it as a speedster. They say, how's Testy? And I said, go ask her. And there she, there she is right there. And she's kind of got into it as well. So we created our own history. 
and it's it's been really exciting. Can you kind of take us on a word's eye tour, okay. uh, walking through this magnificent house? But first off, when we walk through your glass front door, right. The first thing we see is right into your gallery. Yeah. You turn right to go to your front room, your living room. But if you look straight ahead. You have mirrored doors to the front door. So we don't have to go into any other house. We want to talk cars. We can come, right, come in here. right in here. So we just open the gallery door and walk right through into the gallery. And we come into the gallery and we're immediately greeted by cars, some motorcycles, a lounge area with some vintage it's, furniture. It's My coffee table is made out of tires and wheels and glass on top. We have a tractor in here. We have marble sculptures. We took all of the drainage on the house, the patios, the roof water and everything, and we plumbed it down underneath the house, under the ground, and we took it all the way down the hill, and we plumbed it so that the water would come through the front end of a 49 Buick Super, <laughs> through the grill, into the pond that we had designed and made, and we we did it all natural, and it has goldfish and koi in there. And one of the things we have at the pond is we have a big, huge uh, bull. Stands about five feet high, and he's probably six, seven, eight feet long, made out of a 56 Dodge pickup truck all the parts. The truck was chopped up and it was all welded together. And it's quite impressive. I mean, you've got brakes used for the jaw and you've got, you know, leaf springs and you've got, you know, uh, drums and everything. It's all wired. And he's down there by the pond and appropriately, you know, he didn't make it to the water and he kind of just like frozen in time in, in this dry uh, a rock bed. What a great place. Thanks for having us. Folks, uh, we'll be back with more Car Crazy right after this break. When we come back, we'll find out which car company said you'll step into a new automotive age. So stay tuned right here on McGuire's Car Crazy. Car Crazy! So which car maker was associated with this popular ad? In 1948, the Tucker Torpedo appeared on the scene with this memorable phrase, you'll step into a new automotive age when you drive your Tucker Torpedo. And if you knew this obscure bit of car trivia, you must be car crazy. Just when we thought the car hobby might lose the next generation to computers and video games, an entirely new genre of car guys has exploded onto the scene. Their cars are a lot different from the old days, along with the words they use to describe them. But their passion is exactly the same as it has been for car guys since the beginning of our hobby. This new breed of enthusiast is rocking the car hobby to a whole new level, and they brought their computers and video games with them. Listen to what next generation car guys have to say. During the weekdays, you know, got the tie, going to work, going crazy, stir crazy at work, you know what I'm saying? Because I work with, uh, I'm a loan officer, so I do with mortgages and stuff. Yeah, you know, on the weekends I come back, you know, it's kind of like, um, <laughs> go to a car show and it's all about, you know, all about cars. You yeah. know, this is what keeps me going throughout the weekend, so that way when I get back on Monday, I can go back to the grind, the 9 to 5 grind. What's your uh, favorite car here today? I gotta say, it's probably this RX-8 right here. Uh -huh. This is a beautiful car, it's one of the newer cars out right now. Um, his name is Tom, the owner of the car, and I mean, it's just a beautiful machine. It's a hobby, and building the car was a dream, and so we built, this is the second car I built. Well, this is the new project we built for SEMA shows mm -hmm. that just happened last November. Uh, crazy story is probably be uh, going to car shows, uh -huh. setting up the display, putting on a good show for the spectators, and uh, hopefully uh, for the team and all the sponsor and advertise right. for them. So uh, we did really good at Hot Import Nights. Uh -huh. We put on a really crazy show. We have a lot of spectators uh, showing up around the car, taking pictures, and then we have oh, a yeah. model. So it, it's 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 a great pride. So and joy. looks good, man. Great Thank job. You. Thank you. And now once again. Mr. Barry McGuire. Folks, believe it or not, but I, I even enjoy it when you give me constructive criticism. Uh, Bill from Spokane, Washington writes a letter, gives me some advice, and I, I, and I really do appreciate it. He, he says, the reason I'm writing is because I watch your program on speed and enjoy it very much. I don't have a garage full of expensive cars. That having been said, I still feel as car crazy as some of your show guests who have fortunes in rolling stock. None of your guests could be as proud of their rolling works of art as I was with my 55 Chevy. You're a nice guy and a sincere human being, and I know people, and I hope you take these suggestions constructively. Lose that $200 tie, the $1,500 blazer, the 400 shoes, the Rolex, and, and look like you know how to have some fun. <laughs> there are great people all over this country who have fantastic car collections with great stories, but are more common and don't live in Beverly Hills and don't belong to the country club. 
You've got a good show, Barry, but I think it'd be a great show with a few tweaks. Continue good luck with your business and your show. I will continue watching and buying your fine products. <laughs> well, Bill, uh, I appreciate you coming. Hey, the tie's gone. Okay, am I doing all right? Um, I don't have khakis on, but close to it. As far as the Rolex, I have to tell you, uh, there's a special reason for all this. I, I do get my fingers dirty. I wax cars. I've been doing it all my life. Uh, some people think I know quite a lot about doing that. This is my dad's watch. And if there's ever a guy that got his hands dirty, it's my dad. For over 70 years, he made our formulations. That's all he did, wax cars and make products that uh, made waxing the cars all the better and all the more fun and all the more effective. And uh, this was his watch. And when he passed away four years ago, my mom gave me this watch. So. My Rolex, I, I'm not wearing it to impress anybody. I, I, wear, I wear it to remind myself of my dad, who was the most important man in my life. But uh, having said that, uh, if it bothers you, it must be bothering a few other people. So look, no more Rolex on the show, okay? <laughs> I don't want to turn you off. I want to share your passion. I want you to know that I'm where you're at, and uh, I spend a lot of time in, 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 uh, with the kinds of people you're talking about. Most of the hobby doesn't. They don't have great cars and great collections. 85% of the hobby has one car that's their favorite ride, that's the love of their life. I know that. And um, we'll do a better job in the coming months to uh, capture some of those people. That's really why we're doing this segment. One of the reasons is because with letters, through letters like yours, we can connect with people uh, like yourself and really share that passion from the heart with people who do it just for the passion. It hasn't anything to do with money. It's just the passion. And I hope you understand that and feel that from our heart. It means so much to us that you understand where we're coming from here. Thanks for your letter. Thank you, everybody else, for watching and sharing the passion, being with us, allowing us to come to your home every week. And I, I, I do hope that you join us every week at this time for more editions of McGuire's Car Crazy. Car Crazy has been brought to you by McGuire's. Serious car care for car crazy people. If you're car crazy or know someone who is, send your car crazy comments or confessions to carcrazycentral.com.